Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I don't like filming these types of videos because it's pretty much drama filled and I like talking about purely basketball and don't get me wrong, the New York Knicks are a basketball team and we're going to be talking about basketball because there's basketball that goes into it, but it's just like purely negative and it's just like the New York Knicks still have a ways to go when it comes to culture building finding the right coach there's still tons of things the new york knicks need to work on it's not phil jackson bad but just geez there's always something going on with the new york knicks every season that it's just like can we go through a season without there being drama filled and it's just un unacceptable it's just it's just so tiring as even new york knicks fans all new york knicks fans i'm sure are tired of this but i try to keep it real with you guys as much as possible i'm not an rj barrett stan i'm not a julius randall stan i'm not a brunson fan stan i'm a new york knicks fan at the end of the day that tries to keep it as real as possible and i root for everyone to be put in the position to be successful and play at their highest level and play at their highest potential as possible and really execute out there on the basketball floor so the drama that's going around or you know it's real information or at least close to real information i do think it is real i do think it's factual because because it's coming out by ian begley it's coming out by stefan body which are pretty much the adrian warjanowski and the shams of the new york next world for inside information that cam reddish who actually went on to play a portion of the first month of the season he was getting 20 plus minutes per game and one of the main reasons he was getting time was because of Quentin Grimes, because if we're being real with ourselves, when we went on to trade for Cam Reddish, we were excited because of the upside, and how maybe his role will be different here compared to Atlanta, and he was a lottery pick, and there's so unta untapped potential there, but it comes down to how much he wants it, how are we going to utilize him within the offense, the overall consistency of his game, we see the reports come out that Tom Thibodeau did not want him, so I'm like, all right, this is a complete mess, Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau are not on the same page, so you have Quentin Grimes, who's out the beginning of the season, Cam Reddish plays, he actually goes on to be damn solid in those games that he is playing. I'm not saying he's playing at a great level. I'm not saying he's good. I think he's fine. I think he's solid. He's a serviceable player out there on the floor. He's engaged defensively, and that's what Tom Thibodeau wants. And we were starting to see from Cam Reddish that he's not lazy. He doesn't look undisciplined. Doesn't look like he doesn't want it. Those were the huge things coming out of Atlanta inside reporters or him coming out of Duke. Like, how much does he really want it? That constant motivation. But I thought he was engaged defensively. He started to not just get to the basket. He started to finish out the basket. The one thing, his three-point shot is inconsistent, though. He could splash from the outs, splash it from the outside, but then he could have a lot of shots that are really flat as well. That's something he definitely needs to work on. But I'm like, this dude's serviceable. Let's give him minutes. Like, let's, even if it's 15 minutes, let's put him in the best position to be successful for those 15 minutes. Because a lot of people look at, Oh, we only played 14 or 15 minutes, but I think it's everything's attention to detail. How is he being utilized in those 14 to 15 minutes? And that has to do with Obi Toppin as well. He doesn't play a lot of minutes, but on top of that, he's not being played throughout his strengths. And that's what I saw out of Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish is an athletic player. Let's, let's utilize him cutting, constantly moving within the offense. But Tom Thibodeau runs this real, really ancient offense that there's not much movement. There's not much cutting. There's no consistent ball, ball movement. It's a lot of read and react out there on the floor and individual isolation situations. Something Tom Thibodeau just doesn't make adjustments to because he's extremely stubborn. You know, another thing, not making adjustments within the flow of the game or when someone's on fire, he doesn't give him the ball. It just seems like he looks down at his paper. He's like, I'm putting someone in during this time. You know, there's tons of things just I can ramble on about with Tom Thibodeau, just like et cetera and all that. So Cam Reddish is playing well. I think he's playing some decent basketball. We gave up a first round pick for this guy. It's the year also that it's a like contract year. You have to do everything to put him in the position to be successful, play him throughout his strengths. And if he goes, if we go on to move on from Cam Reddish or we go on to keep him, we're like, at least we went out with Cam Reddish. Like Cam Reddish went somewhere else. We traded him just doing our due diligence, doing our best job. Or we did our best job to put him in the position to be successful. We have no regrets. We believe we got the most out of him. So Quinn Grimes comes back. Cam Reddish's minutes go down. And you. See, so this report comes out actually that we're going to be going over. That let's go over it right now. Let's let's go over it. So here we go. So Reddish began the 2022 to 23 season as a part of the Knicks rotation. He averaged 23 minutes per game in the first month of the season, playing in part due to an injury to Quinn Grimes. Once Grimes returned to the regular rotation, Reddish's minutes and role decreased. He was out of the rotation by December 4th. That night, the Knicks beat the Cavs. It was the start of a season-altering eight-game winning streak. At one point before that December 4th game, 
Reddish expressed displeasure to a Knicks assistant coach about the way Tom Thibodeau was was using him per people familiar with the matter. Reddish has not played since he did, he expressed that displeasure. And I don't think that's a coincidence at all that it's just like, yes, Tom Thibodeau did come out and say that he was shortening the rotation, but I do think it's a personal thing at this point. Cam Reddish didn't just straight up go to Tibbs. He went to the assistant coach. I'm just a fan, so maybe players do go to the assistant coaches and it goes down to the head coach. But keep in mind, Thibodeau was someone that didn't want Reddish when the New York Knicks went on to trade for Cam Reddish, getting him from Atlanta. So we barely played last season. Let's keep that in mind. We played him due to Grimes being out with an injury and his minutes decreased. So you could say Reddish doesn't have a great relationship with Tibbs if you went to the assistant coach. By the way, which assistant coach freaking snitched in order for this to get out? And this one of the things, it's like short and rotation and all that. But we see that Reddish does deserve some minutes. You see how fatigued these players are in the fourth quarter. That it's like these players want to be fatigued if we at least gave Reddish like 8 to 10 minutes. You're telling me he's so bad. Like the Knicks think he's so bad to the point that he doesn't deserve any minutes at all. That's blasphemy. That's just absolutely unacceptable. And there's a part of me that Tibbs took, takes that as an insult. Because I feel like Tibbs is that type of coach. He wants to be right all the time. Like, no, I'm right. I'm utilizing him the right way. All right, he said that. Like, I'm offended. He's not playing. I really get that vibe from Tom Thibodeau, but I don't know him per- personally at all. And then you th- look at it when we do have those occasional blowouts. Not all the time that we blow a team out, but most of the time when we're playing like the Pistons because we always go on to beat them. Fima Kyle Luke enters the game at the end. Ryan Archianakno, he plays like in garbage time and the game's completely over. Cam Reddish doesn't even play in garbage time. He doesn't play at all in garbage time. So I feel like it is a personal thing, and that's coaching. Winning or losing, you could say we went on to win. When we adjusted the rotation, no Derrick Rose, no Fournier, no no Cam Reddish. But Cam Reddish or not, like I don't think not playing Cam Reddish is like one of the main reasons you're winning games. Yes, Grimes definitely did help out defensively, but you see it even after that winning streak, like eight-game winning streak, like there's still tons of ups and downs, and you see how The vanilla offense and playing guys a certain amount of minutes definitely does affect us in the fourth quarter. And we also don't have great players. We have good players. Great players could play throughout tiredness and step up in the big moments. Good players, I feel like it's a totally different story. But uh, when a coach, again, we don't know how his, like, we have to also put this in context. When Cam Reddish went to the assistant coach, did he say it and discuss, like, how dare you guys play me that way? Or... Was he polite about it? Because maybe he's still a spoiled player from high school and college. And maybe he does have an attitude issue. And that's maybe why Atlanta traded him. Like, I don't care what we get this, get for this dude. Like, he's just an insult to have on this basketball team. So it depends how he did talk to Tom Thibodeau or talk to the assistant coach about it and what type of attitude. But if you're a good coach, you make your players happy. Especially a player you traded a first-round pick for. You're trying to get the most out of him. You want no regrets if you move on from him. Or you keep them. You put them in the position to be successful. That's your job as a coach. That's your job. And what ties into that is when RJ struggled against LA, when he didn't play most of the fourth quarter, when he got benched in overtime, and he said he had nothing to say after the game, that's a culture problem. Because if you have a good culture, RJ has it in his mind, like, I'm going to speak to the media, I'm going to go through it, I'm going to answer these questions as professional as possible, I'm going to put it on me and say I have to do better, and I know I could talk to... I know I could talk to Tibbs afterwards, but no, he just has nothing to say. And it actually came out that Reddish and RJ talked and it was their decision or they just talked and RJ was like, it's a wise decision for me to not talk. So I don't say anything wrong. I'm extremely frustrated in the moment, but RJ straight up needs to play better as well. Don't get me wrong. The angles he takes on layups just make no sense. How fast breaks, doesn't make consistent reads. We... Like, I shit on Randall for the decisions he makes. RJ makes poor decisions as well. Like, everyone needs to be held accountable for their actions out there on the floor. We could talk about the system, the way RJ's being utilized. He misses wide open threes. His handle's sloppy. Just his defense has definitely taken a huge step back since year two. Doesn't know how to consistently maneuver around screens. I'm not an RJ stand. I'm not a Brunson stand. I'm not a Randall stand. I'm a New York Knicks fan. I try to keep it as real as possible. And when RJ went on to be benched in that game in the fourth quarter, or some of the fourth quarter, then over time. Before that, RJ went on to score like six straight points, but a couple of them I do understand were easy. I believe a couple of them were in transition, just really easy looks at the basketball. One was really nice, a really nice drive baseline, 
But Easy Buckets or not, he was getting into a rhythm, and we know RJ is one of those players that can struggle throughout a game. He can miss free throws throughout a game, but then knock down free throws in the fourth quarter. You know, hit a big time three when he's struggling from three, have a huge drive to the basket, make a nice pass, or make a nice read in the fourth quarter and step up when it matters, like the Celtics game. I know quickly, though he did have it, there are certain players that did have it, but another thing, when RJ would get into a rhythm, you know, checks him out of the game, doesn't give him the ball. I'm not trying to give RJ excuses. He needs to be better. You could say he is disappointing as a third overall pick, but when it comes down to players being utilized, it is a huge thing. When players aren't put in the position to be successful, it is a huge thing. Just my opinion. But Tibbs, is he losing the locker room? You know, RJ is frustrated. He has a connection with Reddish. Or when Reddish leaves through a trade, is it just like, oh, yeah, Reddish was the problem. He's going to end up being the scapegoat. How is this going to end up unfolding? Like, hopefully this doesn't become a whole drama thing within the, the locker room and all that. But again, that just shows Tibbs' stubbornness. He doesn't go on to play him after Reddish went on to make those comments to the assistant coach. I don't think it's a coincidence because this dude doesn't even play in garbage time. Like, he doesn't play at all. Like, at all. And I don't think he's so bad to the point that he deserves, like, no minutes. I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's a decent, solid player. Do I think he's some future star? No. I do think some Knicks fans overhype him. So after I just recapped all that, my question for you guys is, is Tom Thibodeau losing the locker room? If one more guy comes forward, like, let's say Obi Toppin comes forward about the way he's utilized. You know, even when Ra- if Randall's struggling, he still barely plays. Or, like, in general, Obi should be getting action. So Randall's not fatigued in the fourth quarter. Or even when Obi's out there, we could talk about his weaknesses. But he's not utilized throughout his strengths. Like, he can come forward, but I think Obi's just, like, such a classy dude that I just don't see that happening. But if one more player comes forward, is Tibbs cooked? Is he fired in New York despite the record? Because if your players stop playing for you and they stop believing in you, there could be a huge culture problem. Let me know down below your thoughts. Peace out, y'all.